darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. A presence. Jesse Vaden could hear it. A call. It was faint. Reaching for her from a dark place. Vaden was sensitive to visitations. She had them all the time. From her guiding star and the previous director. She was the perfect receiver. As if she'd been made for this. Faden paused to feel it. The force at play here. It was changing things around her, subtle. Trying to make her act. Faden didn't like that. Her guide felt it too. Polaris didn't flare up in defense as with the hiss. So it wasn't all bad. Not a hostile transmission. It was powerful, but it was coming from far away. And made weak because of the distance. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man. A man desperate to escape. She sensed something else, too. A hunger in the dark. Not unlike the hostile resonance. Waiting. She knew that desperate acts can have grim consequences. It was this, more than the man's despair, that made her follow the call. The elevator lights went back on. The darkness receded like a memory. There was a new button on the elevator control panel. Investigation sector. Faden pressed the button. The elevator doors slid shut with practice bravado. There was something there. Reaching for her. Trying to make her act. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man. A hunger in the dark. Investigation sector. Investigation sector, huh? We should check this out. Seems a lot more crowded than the rest of the Bureau. should open. Definitely happened here. Do we know each other? I feel... This feels familiar. I can't seem to... I, I've forgotten. I, I'm sorry. I'm... My name is Alan Wake. 
Zane. There's nothing to worry about. Tom. The poet. The diver. You, you look different. That was just a, a role. A character. The protagonist I played in my, my old film. I'm a filmmaker. An old terror like yourself. We're working on this together, remember? An artistic collaboration. You need a drink. writer? He disappeared years ago. It was all over the news back then. And Thomas Zane was with him. The poet. No, wait. D -d he was a filmmaker. I, I always remember that wrong. Dr. Emil Hartman was desperate. The Federal Bureau of Control had stolen his life's work. This was his last chance, his final experiment. What he'd been too scared to do before. Hartman dove into the lake, was taken, devoured by hungry darkness, became the thing that had been Hartman. Only an echo of him remained, fragmented impulses on autoplay, violent, bloodthirsty darkness in the driver's seat. Emerging from the lake, the thing was captured by the FBC. Brought in, contained, studied. The thing broke loose, killed everyone it could. The FBC fell back and sealed the sector. The thing was alone in the dark, lurking, roaming, waiting. Then something else came. 
Not darkness, but similar enough. A sound. A resonance. It shouldn't be a surprise. If there's one, why not another? The darkness inside the thing could have been immune, could have resisted, fought, could have been passed by, passed through with no effect. But it didn't, and it wasn't. Maybe it had grown weaker over time, not aged. It was timeless, but weaker with no link to its source. A metamorphosis followed. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. Devoured by hungry darkness, became the thing that had been Hartman. Broke loose, killed everyone it could. Lurking, roaming, waiting. Then something else came, a resonance. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. Wake want me to come here. That doesn't look like a house shift. Do I even want to know? The hiss are already in here. Whoa. Looks like the house has gotten a little wild in here. This darkness is blocking the door, so now I have to deal with an interdimensional noise and sentient shadows. Light burns it away, huh? Makes 
sense. Resonance carves its way through the thing that had been Hartman, vibrating, remolding. The sound changes the darkness, and the darkness changes the sound. They both changed what remained of Hartman. They all turned into something else. A third thing. The sound made darker. The darkness made louder. Hartman was stretched. Stretched as anyone when seen from out of time, like a worm through time. Almost... An Ouroboros, a spiral, a maelstrom. The gravity well of a black hole, twisting inward, tightening, taking you deeper and deeper to the bottom, the heart, and through to the other side. The third thing said, when you hear this, you will know you're a new you. He said, we build you till nothing remains. He said, under the conceptual reality behind this reality, you must want these ways to drag you away. He said, baby, 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 yeah, orange peel. The third thing was a monster. He'd tear apart any ordinary person crossing his path. Now he crashed out of darkness toward Faden. There was nothing ordinary about Faden. The darkness made louder. Hartman was stretched like a other time. The third thing was a monster. Now we crashed out of darkness toward fate. Understanding of the darkness is fragmented, incomplete. This abyss, this void, it very much does not wish to be understood. If light symbolizes knowledge, then it stands to reason that darkness would equate to ignorance. By its very nature, it abhors comprehension. Of course, my own nature drives me to comprehend all. We are opposing forces, destined to collide. And given this conflict of natures, we know that the light of truth will burn away the darkness, both figuratively and literally. Any significant light source can be used as protection, even weaponry against this metaphysical gloom. And then there are the artists, 
I know for a fact that Tom, Wake, the Anderson brothers, and Lane all had some involvement with the darkness. The question is whether their uncanny ability to affect reality through their art beckons the darkness, or did their work perhaps even create it? With Wake now secure in my lodge, I expect I shall grow closer to learning the answers to these questions. Assuming he cooperates, which is proving quite the challenge. Well, perseverance is the foundation of knowledge. Speaking of, I must be off on my rounds. darkness is draining me. See you on the monitors. The cameras in there haven't worked since we sealed that sector off a couple years back. Let me guess. You sealed it because of the monster guy. Wait, did you see Dr. Hartman? Jesus, I really wish you hadn't opened that firebreak. 
Okay, listen, you need to find Hartman and kill him before he gets out into the Bureau. That thing is a person? He was a person. We brought him here to study after he was, uh, oh, altered in an AWE. I forget the medical word for what happened, but now light physically hurts him. Do you have a flashlight? No. A uh, lantern? Headlamp. Oh, yeah, flare gun. Oh, Christmas lights. You could wrap them around your- I don't have any of those, Langston. Shit. Okay, uh, well, I'm sure you'll think of something. I'll keep an eye on you from the Panopticon. This is kind of exciting, right? Maybe from where you're standing. Right, okay, well, uh... Break a leg. Oh, uh, why did I say that? Okay, this Hartman thing can't have gotten very far. Let's go flush him out. Hmm. Langston was right. This is kind of exciting.
someone to talk to, you know? Ever since I got put in charge of the Panopticon, people treat me different, like I'm crazy for wanting to work with altered items. People just don't understand the altered items like I do, you know? I don't want to brag, but it does take a very empathetic mind to connect with the items. Doesn't Still, want I don't to brag. People are making it so personal. <laughs> right. I mean, the teams in research... It's so personal. I mean, the teams in research handle paranatural materials every day, and no one thinks they're weird. Well, maybe that's not true. Darling is famous for being a bit out there, but when he's weird, it's charming. Altered items really aren't that frightening once you get to know them. If you figure out what they like or don't like, you know, what sets them off, then there's nothing to worry about. Like whatever force had a hold on Hartman isn't mixing well with the his corruption. Blake did call him the third thing. A chain letter. <laughs> I remember these. Mom used to say they were evil. Hmm. Better do what it says. 
You know, just in case. There must be a photocopier. Hartman just came through here? God, he was hideous. He tore the security door into the Bray Falls AWE site wide open. He was so ugly. Like, wow, I got a good look at him, and Christ, he does not look like he used to. The hiss must have messed him up or something. He, he, he looks like a, a bar rag that's been twisted by the world's strongest men, or a monster from some 80s horror movie. You know, back when it was all practical effects? Ugh, did, nasty. Real did you say something? Winston. Remember, I can't hear you. Never mind, just go after Hartman. Ah, oh, so disgusting. I've written, rewritten. I've written and rewritten. Deconstructed, reconstructed. Experimented with different voices. Changed the style, changed myself. Forgotten the language, relearned the language. Have I been here before? Gone down this path before? The darkness wants to hide the past to make me lose my way. You must know where you've been to know where you're going. I trust what I read on these pages. I wrote them for a reason. My notes to myself. The only way to make progress, recap, then write more. The style then, lose the fat. Make it clear, ugly, functional, present, be blunt, only the brutal truth, cut through the reality, tear it apart, rewrite it, 
be clever. Make them do the work. Form the image in their minds. They make it. You just imply. Incept. They're drawn to the mystery. Obsessed. You set it up. They put it together. Their interpretation. And there's only one because you give them no choice. And they believe in it because it's theirs now. wants to hide the past to make me lose my way. I trust what I read on these pages. I wrote them for a reason. Cut through the reality, tear it apart, and rewrite it. They are drawn to the mystery. Thank you for meeting with us again, Dr. Arpin. It's my pleasure, gentlemen. I hope the information I provided thus far has been of some small use. It's been invaluable, Doctor. Really, we have a much clearer picture of this event, thanks to your accounts. Well, I do consider myself a keen observer of... Well, we did have one question, though. You mentioned in an earlier conversation that your patients displayed and I'm paraphrasing here, unnatural abilities that you in fact encouraged during their time in your lodge. It'd be very helpful if you could fill us in on the details there. Of course. Like yourselves, I work to understand and even bend the rules of our earthly paradigm. My patient's well-being was paramount, of course, but I would hardly be a man of science if I did not reach out at the underlying truth. As I stated in my written proposal, I believe working alongside your organization could be greatly beneficial to both parties. Sharing notes, as they say. Thank you, Doctor. That's all we need to hear. Remy? Dr. Emil Hartman, you have been found in breach of codes 4, 8, and 74 of the Federal Bureau of Control Criminal Offense System. What? You can't do this! I am a well-connected man. You're making a dire mistake, my friend. You will be detained until further notice and all personal property will be confiscated, including the Cauldron Lake Lodge. That's preposterous. You can't just seize my property. I'm a United States citizen. I have rights. That lodge is my life's work. I'm offering you years of research. Get him out of here. You're making a mistake. You have to listen to me. You have to listen.
Whatever is going on with Wake, he clearly needs some help. The story needed many beginnings, many springs, streams that turned into a river, a flood, and then an ocean. This was one. Wake used the materials he had, the connections he had, the people, the places. Wake put them in to make it true. His wife, the psychiatrist, his city. These connections, like magnets, move things. Alice was a conduit. She'd been in the dark place. The thing that had been Hartman sensed her near, sensed Wake through her, went berserk, broke loose. Wake made sure Alice was already gone by then. Safe. The more springs, the more the story became real, the more people believed. Cause and effect. It was extremely delicate and hard work. It had to go through the path of least resistance where success was most likely, where there was a connection already. Wake felt the pressure grow in his head going mad. Wake had to escape. Right. His. Escape. He was already out. He wanted to make it true. Wake needed a hero. A hero needed a crisis. For the part in the story about the government agency, Wake needed something special. Something to convey an alien force mimicking human intelligence. Something that can't be translated. Translated. Wake channeled Burroughs and Bowie. He cut up sentences and words. Orange peel. You are home. Insane. He put them in a shoebox. He pulled out the words. Wake created a Dada's poem. I'd try anything once. Or had he tried this before? What is escape? Wake needed a hero. A hero? Needed a crisis. For the part in the story about the government agency, Wake needed something special, something to convey the alien force, mimicking human intelligence. Another replica, like the one they made for ordinary. Director Faden here. Send backup to my location. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hartman won't be a problem anymore, Langston. But Investigations needs someone to run it. Interested? I've seen what happens to Sector Heads, ma'am. No thank you. Ma'am, I'm getting something on my terminal here, an AWE alert from Bright Falls, Washington. But it might be a glitch. The date's all wrong a couple of years in the future. And we're in lockdown, there shouldn't be any incoming signals. Maybe it was active before we went into lockdown? Are there agents on site? Let me check. Agent Estevez is the field agent in charge of monitoring the site, so she should be there to let us know if the situation has been through any major changes recently. You have been warned. 